Love carries unavoidable risks. If you love, you're going to be hurt. If you love, you're going to experience disappointment, confusion, betrayal, suffering, heartache, loss, change. Love is full of risks. And one way to think of this challenge is that God's gift of love always takes us to new places, to undiscovered landscapes of understanding, to mountains of heartache, to oceans of forgiveness, to potholed roads of challenge, to stunning gardens of courage. To honor our founding pastor, the Reverend John Murray, we'll be looking at the risks of love this morning through the lens of ministry. Love always takes us to new places, sometimes to places we never thought we would go or perhaps did not ever want to go. Such was the case with John Murray. More about that later. And not uncommonly, the places to which love takes us, especially in this strange and wondrous calling called ministry, are actually geographic. This was dramatically true for St. Paul, whose love for God and love for Christ and love for the church took him all over the map. St. Paul did love the church. The church became his life sharing the love of Christ and forming new communities around Christ's grace-filled, self-sacrificing love was Paul's ministerial calling. And just about everything he did in loving the church and loving its people was risky. The risks he took for love of God and for love of the communities of Christ led him to be maligned, beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, thrown in jail, and in the end, probably beheaded by one of Nero's hit squads. Love sometimes carries big risks, even life-threatening risks. When we meet Paul in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, he has just been to the city of Perga on the southern coast of what is now called Turkey after which he sailed back to Antioch, which is not far from Tarsus, his hometown. That's where Paul grew up. There is some confusion in this moment, however, some confusion about where God is calling him next. Paul has been waiting for some divine instruction, for a sign. He was thinking maybe Asia. But it turned out that was not where God wanted him to go after all. And just a footnote here, when we think Asia, we think China and the surrounding nations. But in the New Testament, the word Asia referred to what is now Western Turkey. Paul really wanted to go to the cities of Bithynia and Mysia, but... Allowing the spirit to lead the way, he went to Troas instead. While in Troas, Paul had the vision you just heard about, the vision of a man of Macedonia begging to him, pleading, come over to Macedonia and help us. Macedonia. Paul hadn't thought of Macedonia but having seen this vision, he got ready at once and left for Macedonia. For St. Paul, all of this, what we hear in these few little verses, all of this was a reminder that ministry is not always about what you want, but about what God wants. Now I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege I've been serving this church for 16 years, which is astonishing to me and perhaps to you. <laughs> After about eight years, I told God I would wait for a sign regarding when I should leave. I wondered, would there be a call to another church, to another community? But 
But year after year, there was no clear divine message. So I stayed, 16 years. Then suddenly, last spring, there seemed to be one sign after another that the time had come. One of those divine signs, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but one of those divine signs was attending my Princeton Theological Seminary reunion. There I saw some classmates I had not seen in 40 years. All of them have loved the church dearly and have traveled to places they never anticipated, places they never imagined they would go. God called them unexpectedly to various Macedonias, and they went, sharing the love of Christ and taking the risks that accompany such love and sustaining the hurts and heartaches that follow unavoidably. The experience of my aging classmates has been mine as well, with the exception that heading into ministry, I had no personal ambitions, zero, and no lofty expectations. I went to Princeton hoping I would simply learn and share more of the love of Christ and immerse myself in the grace of God and dance with the Spirit wherever it led. I never really thought it would lead me into serving a congregation. While I obediently went to seminary, I never thought a church would call me. Not in the 70s. I was clear with God about this. You know, no one's going to hire me, I whispered. <laughs> However, much to my astonishment, a lovely and generous church in West Hampton Beach called me to be their intern for a couple of years. West Hampton Beach. It was beyond imagining. Then a courageous and patient church in Delaware called me into ministry with them. Delaware. I had never thought of Delaware. Cut straight along the Mason-Dixon line, Delaware was a challenging place late in the 70s and early in the 80s as desegregation laws were changing neighborhoods and schools and churches were being blessed, including the one I served, with clear opportunities to challenge racism boldly in their own backyards. Then, after five years or so, we came to Maine, of all places, and I thought, well, no church in the state of Maine will hire me because there are no Presbyterian churches here. But in God's raucous sense of humor, almost immediately and certainly unexpectedly, the unpredictable spirit of God gathered a group of Presbyterians right around me and I was given the daunting privilege of becoming the founding pastor of the first Presbyterian church to be established on the coast of Maine since the 1700s. That was a huge surprise. And let me tell you, you know this, God is full of surprises. Next, Russ went on assignment to Washington, D.C., and thinking once again I might catch a little break from the demands of ministry, without delay, a lively, creative congregation, a very diverse group of people which had just lost uh, their pastor, called me to help them. To this day, I don't know how they found me, because I was hiding. This wonderful church, just inside the Beltway, led me into learning what interim ministry is all about. And when at last we returned to Maine, I received formal interim training and dove into this unique vocation in a few churches here in Maine. Eventually, interim ministry led me to this congregation. Another surprise. 
Yes, God is full of surprises. My little map of ministry is all Macedonia, all unexpected, and of course all filled with the risks that attend the holy work of loving. But enough of my little journey, back to John Murray. This is, after all, John Murray Sunday, an occasion for bagpipes and other Scots-Irish salutations. I don't think John Murray wanted to come to Maine. I think he made that clear. In 1766, it was still pretty wild around here. I know, some of you are thinking, well, it's wild now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was walking downtown last night, and it was pretty wild. But it truly was wild. This peninsula was a place laden with risk. Hard scrabble farming, cold, bitterly cold winters, um, and deadly conflicts between indigenous peoples and settling Europeans. But like Paul's vision of the man from Macedonia calling out to come and help, John Murray received an unexpected call to ministry in this place. Out of love for God and love for the church, Murray took the risk of traveling from Northern Ireland to this new world. And in 1766, when the new and only church in Booth Bay was dedicated, Murray chose this very scripture passage from the 16th chapter of Acts about St. Paul being called by God to Macedonia as his sermon text. And Murray came to love the emerging community here. And he came to love the church and the people here. And he came to love the landscape here. And he came to love the fledgling nation here. And he undoubtedly bore the heartaches and wounds of ministry here. And so this morning we say thanks be to God for John Murray, for the love he shared, for the risks he took, for the brilliance and energy he brought to this congregation and community. And as we love, as we continue to attempt to love with all our heart and soul and strength, and assume the risks of holy love, may God continue to lead all of us to new places, if not geographically, then to undiscovered landscapes of understanding and to oceans of forgiveness and to gardens of courage. Amen.